My name is Noel Groom. I am an aspiring tailor. I want to educate men what a good suit is, and I want to be able to be known for dressing gentlemen. I worked in finance while I was doing my apprenticeship. I knew I had a very good career opportunity to grow within finance industry. I, could, I would have like a very good salary by now and have a very good life, you know. There was a lot of time was like, hey, do I want to be safe? Or do I want to actually follow what I really want to do in life? How hard is it for an Asian tailor with an Asian background to break through in sort of like a Western market? See, all this is like a canvas and we don't use glue inside. How you got involved in this tailoring industry and also uh, what's your background? I'm Noel, I am studying 1MM. I have good team behind me, Omid, Natalia. It's not just me, this is a tailoring house. 1MM stands for one millimeter. It's all about dressing up gentlemen, um, millimeter by millimeter. I've seen people buying suit for like six, seven thousand dollars from a brand and it doesn't even fit them well. There are still men who need to be educated about what a real bespoke suit is. A bespoke suit needs to be in the atelier from the scratch. You need to know the tailor, the tailor needs to know you, that's what bespoke is, but it's been really commercialized. People need to know how it is made what they're getting, how it fits them. My goal is to create a community for a gentleman. It's not just gonna be a shop. I don't wanna have like thousands of customers where only they come and go. That's not my goal. 1MM is about building a community among gentlemen. Like, you know, I'm not just here to make suit for you. They need to come in, we can talk about anything. Yeah, and then you've got a chest canvas and this is actually made from a horse head. I grew up in Singapore, I was born there, um, my dad was a Goka and then I moved to Nepal after he retired where I'm originally from. In terms of how I got into tailoring, my mom was actually a seamstress and I came to Australia initially to do my degree in fashion design. There was a course where we had to do tailoring and that's when I found out like, oh my god, this is what I really love to do. I found Bijan who is like my mentor, so I started doing apprenticeship with him. Bijan. He has played a role not just as my mentor in tailoring, he's been almost like a dead figure for me. He's from Iran, he worked there, he went to Germany, worked in Italy, worked in London for Huntsman. Yeah. You know, Huntsman, they yeah. dress up like royalty. He's very significant in Sydney, like in Australia. He is a true master tailor and that's who I learned from. There was a point in time in my life I was like, is it really tailoring in Australia? Like, should I be here or should I actually go to like London, Italy and actually go there? And that's, that's where the major scenes are in tailoring, right? In terms of tailoring industry in Australia, there's still a lot of room to grow. And I think European market, hopefully they would come here and invest. COVID has been a hard two years. How did it impact you and also your aspiration to build the 1MM? The food traffic slowed down. It changed a lot of people's style. Like they don't need to be in suit. They're more casual. You know, suit is a suit. Like I'm sorry, like pandemic or whatever, I'll still have my suit in my wardrobe. A suit is like, a, it's like an armor for a guy. Yeah. It's like confidence. When you wear it, you have that confidence. Like I'm in a suit, this is it. Be in a video interview, walk in the street. Yeah you will always feel like, you know, I've got it. You need to have it, like, come on, it's not, it's not gonna die. Suit will always be there for men. How hard is it for an Asian tailor, all right, with an Asian background, to break through in sort of like a Western market? You know, like, in, if, if you're good at what you do, be Asian, be black, be white, mm -hmm. people will come to you if you have a good work. So I won't use an excuse as me being Asian and being challenging in Western culture. If you know what you're doing, 
if you deliver what you're good at, people will come to you as an individual. I would question myself a lot, but again, the motivation is keep going. Don't, don't give up. I'm sure success will come along on its way. I, like, I'm sure it will one day. Just because I've got a telia like this, doesn't mean like I am successfully running the business. No, it's actually a really a struggle. And I'll be honest, like it's not, it's not glamorous at all. And I question myself, oh my God, like what would life be, be like if I had actually chose the safe route? From an Asian family, they always want you to be an engineer, doctor. <laughs> I think in life, you just need to enjoy what you do and you need to just follow, follow it. I, I honestly, like I never planned. I didn't plan at all to be here as a tailor. It just, I, I kind of learned what I wanted to do, found myself what I wanted to do, and yeah, I think it's never planned what you want to do in life, right? If you ever, ever need a good suit, honest opinion, it doesn't need to be a suit made from me, it can be made elsewhere and you want an advice, please come to me, that's what a one MM is. <laughs>